It doesn't mean that I'm going to have to always have a headset on. It doesn't mean that uh, it's going to be Ready Player One and floating avatars. Those are simply uh, examples of things that can be done in 3D worlds. But really, it's about the consistency of 3D worlds from uh, virtual world to virtual world. Things look the same. They behave the same, the same way that we could do, look at that today in the web. And what makes that possible is USD or universal scene description. And what we will experience it with is a simulation engine. So instead of just a browser to see something, we will have actually have these things being simulated to us. So we can be in a warehouse or a factory or a different location and things like that. And we can peer into that world using our tablet, our computer, mouse and stuff like that. Or we could, yes, put on a headset and virtually be in that environment as well. But the, the key thing here is that metaverse uh, a connective tissue of 3D worlds allows for industries to take advantage of this. And this is what we're talking about with Omniverse. Omniverse is our platform for collaboration and simulation. You, you can think of it as two parts of a journey. It is a, the first part is that we connect with all the different 3D tools that are out there or the majority of them through USD. So whether you're doing architecture, manufacturing, or media and entertainment, game development, et cetera, you have a way to bring your existing tools to connect to the platform. And then we bring to that platform, we bring many years, over 25 years of NVIDIA technology in the areas of photorealistic real-time ray tracing, um, AI, materials, things like that, and the ability to collaborate. So once you've brought these, these connected, connected apps to it, you can collaborate anywhere, anywhere in the world. Um, wow. And so that's how you can use Omniverse in the first part of the journey to create these virtual worlds or create content for these virtual worlds. And then the second part of the journey is the operation of those, the, the simulation of what's taking place in a true to reality simulation between the digital world and the physical world. And that's something that you'll hear of many, many times, especially going forward around digital twins. We're seeing companies use the platform in the building digital twins of their warehouses, factories, transportation systems, locations, things like that. So Omniverse can be thought of more like the operating system of the of the metaverse. It brings together existing apps, it gives you new superpower capabilities and allows you to deploy them anywhere in the world. Right. No, that's very helpful. I appreciate that. And I guess what was the driver? What prompted NVIDIA to create Omniverse? Great question. Uh, we needed it. <laughs> First and <laughs> foremost, we've been building Omniverse uh, for many years here because we simulate everything we build, um, we visualize everything we build, and we have teams that are working on this that are all around the world, so they have to collaborate, and they use different tools depending on what part of the products and technologies are being developed. Um, but it was something that as it started being developed, the company realized this is something that the industry can benefit from. And sure enough, we started to reach out to our, our partners and, and uh, customers years ago, like probably five years ago at this point, maybe six years ago, on what we were building and and got their input and and you know it started this this thing that was going to be bigger than all of us in the in the context. Then we had the pandemic hit and that of course accelerated a lot of things. You know, um, necessity is the mother of invention at times, right? And and so what took place is we were all of a sudden we were all remote. We were all working on projects in remote locations. So it actually helped accelerate some of these these needs. Um, but it was always something that has been in development, has been something that we use and have been using for many years. And now we have hundreds of customers using it and hundreds of thousands of individuals using it. Yeah, wow. And I guess what's what makes the Omniverse unique? What what's a big standout? Yeah, the, the, I think that starting from outside and kind of working in the outside is that we don't set out to replace anything that's being done today. We extend and enhance. And that's a, a common mantra that is used throughout. Like you should bring the tools you're comfortable with, whether you're designing a car, building a house or creating the, the next visual effects in a movie, bring the tools you want and then connect in and collaborate with others that are using tools that they want. Because one of the biggest challenges out of the gate that Omniverse solves is the ability to use multiple tools on the same project. That has always been a challenge in all industries. You export from one, import to other, and it's very time consuming, but each of the tools have their specific area of expertise so they get used that way. So films have multiple tools being used as does anything else uh, in that process. So what we were able to do by have them all being connected to the platform live is you no longer have to export and import. I can be in one application, you can be in another, and we're both working in this virtual world together. 
and we don't have to export and import anymore. So that was like the, one of the biggest uh, out of the gate uh, problems being solved. But then the collaboration in real time, you know, it's it's been a challenge in the past to work on things remotely because the data is so large. Um, I know from my own past, we had a team of nine people at the studio just working on managing data from one location to another location, you know, because it was really important, but it's also really, really heavy. Well, by using USD and the Omniverse platform, you don't have to ship everything everywhere anymore. You can be synchronized in the cloud, and then the only things that you're sending back and forth are deltas of change. So that allows you to work in real time. And then the, um, you know, in 2018, with the uh, announcement of RTX, the ability to have photorealistic ray tracing in real time, that was a big game changer that had never, that had been a dream for 30 plus years in computer graphics. And all of a sudden now you're working in a real time environment. You're no longer waiting for things. Um, of course, the, the, you know, the Pixar's work with USD or universal scene description, all of these things kind of came together at the same time to make this kind of like the, the big boom of, of what the next generation of create, creative tools will be. Um, the ability to scale as well. So uh, Omniverse brings a unique ability that you can run it on a laptop, you can run it on a workstation, you can run it on a, uh, a server, you can run it via the cloud, and you can scale depending on the size of your project. So the, the, the beautiful thing there is that, you know, you can do a digital twin of a small project you're working on, or like we're working on a digital twin of Earth. This is a bigger project. It's going to require a supercomputer. Right. <laughs> Our lights just shut off here. So let me, there we go. <laughs> in our conference room here back at the office, you know, you got to have a little motion, get the lights on. And when I, I guess I didn't watch my hands. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so those are some of the things that, that Omniverse brings that makes it unique and compelling to the users that are having it. And, and we're seeing the success. I mean, I think one of the biggest indicators of success for Omniverse is that we are now in every major industry on the globe. Like we're in telecommunications, transportation, retail, warehouses, uh, media and entertainment, game development. All of these areas are using Omniverse ways that they need for their particular use case. But that just goes to show that it is really something that we are doing collectively with the industry. That is not a walled garden. We are not trying to dictate how things get done. Just the opposite. We're as open as, as can be and we invite others to come in. We're constantly listening and improving based on feedback from customers and partners. That's fantastic. And I guess just honing back in on USD or universal scene description. So why, why what made, what compelled NVIDIA to choose to base Omniverse on USD? Yeah. And so from a user point of view, what does that mean? How does that benefit the actual end yeah. users? Excellent question. So um, what made us decide on USD is that Pixar was having similar problems that most everyone else in the industry. They had multiple teams working on big projects with different software. So they developed USD for their own needs first and then decided to open source it. We looked at USD and really equated it as the HTML of 3D. It's the underlying uh, connective tissue that we need for these virtual worlds to be consistent in much the same way HTML does for the websites to be consistent. So um, we actually had been doing other development prior and the, the team stopped and made the decision to move to USD because we all felt that, you know, from that standpoint, it was going to revolutionize the industries. And, and so far, we've been right. Um, and we're not alone. There's most every company that's got 3D products out there either is supporting USD in one way or another today, or they have plans to. So some are exporting to it. Others are building um, a bi-directional real-time connector so that you can be working in one tool and have it updating in the other tool and things like that. So we're seeing a great deal of support for it across the industry. Yeah, that's fantastic. And actually, you mentioned, so you talk about there's a lot of support from industry and um, that Omniverse is in place in every industry, I suppose. Are there any particular industries that Omniverse is more, you know, designed for? And um, I suppose, how is Omniverse helping these industries? Yeah, great question. Um, so it's designed to be uh, something that can be open and, and, and constructed in the way is, that's necessary for its particular use case. At the very core of Omniverse is Kit. A, a software development kit that allows you to build applications or extensions or just customize it in any way you, you need. And we're seeing, you know, just incredible use cases from our customers. We have um, a company called Heavy AI working with Deutsche Bahn, the second largest transportation company in the world and the national train railway for Germany. 
that has over 37,000 kilometers of track and over 5,000 stations. And they're, they've built a digital twin of their environment so that they can monitor and train AI and things in the digital twin before committing to it in the physical space. And that's a, you know, the telecommunications and transportation markets are huge, right? These are multi-trillion dollar industries. And if we can help them be more efficient and be uh, have a better carbon footprint and things like that through using these collaborative tools and, and the AI that comes with it, that's fantastic. Um, other examples, you know, we have, uh, uh, Lowe's retail. I don't know if you have those in Australia, but there's about 2,000 of these uh, home improvement stores that are very large. They have over 300,000 associates that work. Um, they've been building digital twins of their stores because there's, as you can imagine, when you're handling all of that uh, kind of content in there from wood to, to the fixtures and things like that, they have a massive uh, undertaking to have to lay out those things properly, understand their their inventory and things. And they've actually been working with a company called Magic Leap that has an AR headset, the Magic Leap 2 head oh. AR headset. They built a connector into Omniverse so that they can be connected to their real-time database digital twin of the physical store, and they can interact with both at the same time. So their retail associates can be in the store and look and see if something's missing or get information on something, things like that. Um, those are just two examples that, that are fairly significant. Um, and and they're they're great because I think it's just an indicator of where this is going to change how people do things. Yeah, they're really fascinating, really awesome um, experiences. I guess do can I ask? Do you have any examples from any companies that might have a presence in Australia? Um, well, you know, our my my uh, company I used to work for, uh, Industrial Light and Magic, has been. Yes. Uh, uh, heavily uh, uh, tested out Omniverse and putting it through some great testing. Uh, and so we work with them and they've got a beautiful new offices down in Australia. I hope to visit one day soon, but um, they're the first ones that come to mind. But I know that there's lots of companies that uh, in the M&E space, especially, but um, I can find out some others. I mean, we have over a thousand companies now that are either you know enterprise level companies that are either using or evaluating the platform so there's a lot to choose from and we can find out any others and get back to you but i know that ilm's been pretty jazzed with it and and you know they're just constantly doing amazing work that's fantastic no that's exciting a moment ago i've got to come back to this you mentioned that nvidia is building a digital twin of the earth that's yes. in i guess what what um yeah so that's that a small undertaking <laughs> i know <laughs> what's, what's, what's the latest on that? Where is this? Up to? So, um, you know, Omniverse is, uh, I mean, NVIDIA is always about solving big problems around the world. That is kind of the um, guiding principle through the things that we do here at the company and starting with our CEO, Jensen. And the, the decision was made um, to build a digital twin of Earth to better understand climate change. And that requires a massive amount of compute. So there's a supercomputer being built to do this. A massive amount of information. You got to get all the information that you can. And just starting first with the atmosphere, right? So understanding the atmosphere and what's what's making change in the atmosphere and what's causing that. By having the historical data, we'll be able to look at that data and we'll be able to use AI to project out other scenarios that may happen. For example, if something happens in this part of the world, you know, if this forest gets chopped down, it's going to affect something in this part of the world. And we've never really had the ability to look at things holistically like that. That's the the goal. And it's a multi-year development. You know, this is not happening overnight, as you can imagine, the amount of detail and the amount of compute horsepower to do that. So, you know, we should have some updates in the next, you know, six or eight months about the status and where it's going. But right now it's a project that's fully underway. And I think, you know, we all get to benefit from. Yeah, that's incredible. That's really interesting and impressive. So, well, I guess I'm sold on Omniverse. I suppose what is uh, what do you see as the future of Omniverse, and what more can we expect? Yeah. So, well, first of all, Omniverse for individuals is free. I should mention that too. Uh, you can download it at Nvidia.com/slash/Omniverse. Um, it, it, we have a subscription model for the uh, enterprise customers and things like that. And where we're going, as we talked about this week at GTC, is we're moving to the cloud. Everything we are, we have our first SaaS offering using Omniverse. So 
our existing enterprise Omniverse customers can start to use different parts of the, the product and the platform via the cloud. So they can use Farm, which allows them to set up like uh, instantaneously set up render farms or compute processes using cloud technology. We've already had Nucleus uh, announced as a cloud tool that's now in early access. So that gives you the ability to run Nucleus in the cloud for remote collaboration. Uh, we've got Replicator for synthetic generation, uh, Isaac Sim and Drive Sim. So really what's next is that this whole thing moving to the cloud so that uh, we'll, what we will have with Omniverse cl um, Cloud is the ability for anybody anywhere on any device to access the platform. That is the vision and that's where we're headed. And I know that's a welcome, uh, a welcome thing from so many people that are on that they either don't have an RTX based machine or on a different platform that have been truly lusting after getting their hands on this. And so I can't wait for them to have it. Um, I think it's, you know, it's it's a great undertaking and the results will be, you know, available to all. Yes, no, that's exciting. I'm really excited by that. No, thank you so much, Richard. That's been fantastic. Thank you for your time. My pleasure. Happy to.